Greetings from the land of OP. I am Rob, the OP Gamer, and I am bringing you a brand new build spotlight on my brand new channel here at Twitch and YouTube, Rob, the OP Gamer. I came from a previous channel that still exists, but I wanted to kick off a brand new channel because I'm re-imaging myself, I'm reinventing myself, recreating myself as it were, so you can now catch me everywhere at Rob, the OP Gamer, whether it's Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter... It's all the same, all the same link, just whatever website it is, you can catch me at Rob the OP Gamer, and I am starting out with a new build spotlight. Haven't been doing build spotlights in a long time, wanted to get back to them. Really excited for this one, and of course, don't forget to follow me on uh, all those websites as well. So let's kick this off really quick here. I wanted to do a brand new build spotlight today on Orberry Bushes. We are going to kick this off with Orberry Bushes. So, uh, basically what ends up happening is you're exploring, you, you, get in, you get in here and you built your brand new base, you're like, sweet, I got an awesome base, now what do I do? And you're wandering around, you're exploring, and you're like, I'm going to go dig for resources. And as you're digging for resources, you get into one of these caves, you're like, oh, hey, a bush. What's this bush? And if you click on the bush, you get an iron ore berry, like, oh, wow, it's, it's, it's iron berries. What do these do? So you open any eye, and you click U for usage, and you see that you can, you can, uh, craft nine of them into an ingot or you can smelt them into an iron nugget apparently you can make things directly with them too like lawn caps and stuff that's pretty cool but basically you're like well this just gave me a berry what do I do with this so you pick it up and eventually you start collecting all of them so there's one for gold one for iron one for copper one for tin one for aluminum and there's even an essence berry bush and you're like, wow, these are basically free resources. What do I do with this? So you decide that you're going to go do something with it. You get back to your base. And then what you do is, if it's free resources, obviously you want to find some nifty way to farm that. Well, you know what? Good, good way to do it. Happy to tell you now that I've got a good, a good plan for you here. So let's get started really quick. Um, these can be automatically harvested by golems, which is what we're going to do today. We're going to be blending... The Tinker's Construct mod, I believe these come from. I could be wrong, but I believe uh, my server admin said these come from uh, Tinker's Construct. These Orberry bushes. You don't normally, by the way, you don't find them right in the first cave in the first like Y level 78 or 64 or whatever you're at. You actually you generally find these pretty low in the ground, Y level 40 or below, I believe. Again, I could be a little mistaken on that, but generally you find them deeper when you're digging around. I just put that one there for demonstration's sake. So we're going to blend Tinker's Construct with these with Thongcraft 4 for Golems. So I'm going to show you how to get set up with this first. Obviously you're going to want to be able to get to Golems. I have uh, set myself up here. Obviously I'm cheating. I'm in creative mode. I won't... I'm not actually playing this game. This isn't an actual play series. I'm just showing you how to do things. So I'm cheating. You won't be cheating in your series. Or maybe you will be. I don't know. But I got all the research set up in the book. I'm not going to be doing Thomcraft research on camera because that's meant to be somewhat of a secret and I don't want to spoil anything. But what you do is you got to unlock Golemancy. It doesn't matter what golem you use. The straw golem, the first straw golem you get to is probably good enough. You can see that they've got a very low durability, very low strength. But they're really fast. They can only carry one thing. But that should be perfectly fine. Um, you should be okay with that, especially because you can upgrade them to a degree. You can always take these in here, and you can, let's see, there's an upgrade listing right here, one upgrade. So uh, if you get into upgrades later on, these are the upgrades. So here's an upgrade for air, makes your golem faster, if you know what I'm saying. Upgrade for earth, make your golem stronger. Fire, make your golem all fired up. Apparently that uh, gives them an increased melee attacks, also set golems on fire. Sets target on fire, that's for the guard golem though, we're not going to be doing anything with that. But the different upgrades do different things. So if you get to the point where you're upgrading your golems, fantastic. You can up take a couple upgrades. If you don't want to do straw golems, you can always repurpose them later. Because golems are really modular now with Thongcraft 4. You pick the type of golem and they have different stats. Like if you click on clay, you can see he's got an average strength and durability. But he's slow to self-repair and he's got an average speed. So whereas the other golem had really low durability and strength, this guy's got average. But instead of being really fast, he's just average speed. But he can carry eight things. So if you want to get into the higher tier golems, they got better stats. You can always repurpose them later. And I'll show you that here in a few minutes as we get to it. So you're going to want to get two cores. You get the golem research done, and then you get the core research. The first one you're going to get is gathered. You're going to need one of those. 
And then the other thing you're going to need is the harvest core. You'll need one of these. So these are pretty early research. You just, as soon as you hit Gollomancy along your Thongcraft career, you can start with just this one and these two cores, and they're all right in a nice little tight line right there. You don't really need to, don't really need to push in that tight line if you know what I'm saying. So that's all you'll need, and you can repurpose them later as you get further along the research. All right, once you've gotten all the research and everything that you're going to need for your Gollomancy, you're going to need to craft them. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. You can see that the making of the golems is going to be a crucible recipe, meaning that you need to put the essences that you want inside the crucible and then throw in a catalyst. The catalyst for any such things like the straw golem is going to be a hay bale, or the wood golem is going to be a great wood log. Uh, the clay golem will be a brick, clay bricks. Tallow golems will be a tallow block, which is made out of tallow. And any sort of th that kind of thing, it'll tell you in the recipe what the what the catalyst is. So here's a blank animation core. Get you the with these aspects, we'll get you the and with get you the gather core. So it's going to be a crucible setup. So all we need is a crucible. To get a crucible, we just take seven iron ingots and we're going to craft them into a cauldron. And then all you got to do for the cauldron is you can, you're going to come over here. You're going to find a little nice little spacing. You're going to say, okay, I want to put it here. And it's going to need, first off, a source of fire, because you have to heat the cauldron to boil the water. you got to boil that shit, guys. Boil it good. So that's probably going to be your easiest way to go about it, just a piece of nether brick and a nether rack, because that stuff will never... That will burn forever. Always constant hot burning. So you get that set up, and then what you're going to do is place the cauldron over the top of it. Like so. And then you're just going to right-click the wand, right-click it with your wand, just pow, just give it a hit, and now you've got a crucible. And by the way, don't stand this thing, it will damage the hell out of you. I can do it because I'm in creative mode, but if I turn off creative mode really quick, you'll see that I'll start taking damage. Maybe only if there's water in it. Let's put some water in it. So you put a bucket of water in there, it'll start boiling, and you'll all start taking damage, because it'll start boiling my feet. My feet, guys! Ow, ow, ow. Apparently OP feet do not help. Don't do that. Make sure you've got a water source in the corner, or nearby any way that you can pull out of. It's just, you know, a couple water sources will get you infinite water. That way you can keep your crucible filled. Turn creative mode back on here in case I kill myself. So, <laughs> that'd be fantastic. So now that we got that all set up, what we're going to do is you need to put in what it said to put in. Let's create us a, create ourselves a golem here. We're going to start with the wood golem because that's probably easiest. Actually, flesh golem you might have. If you can't find a great wood tree, you can go with a great wood log. Just one great wood log for your catalyst. Let's see what this guy is. Below average, low average for above average. Flesh golem is low. Below average and low. So he's got a little bit more durability. He's also very fast for his repair speed where he's average. They've got the same carry limit and above average speed, above average speed. But he's, he can have two upgrades. So you might want to go with the Flesh Golem. Because if you haven't found a great wood log, the Flesh Golem, you, the catalyst is just going to be a block of flesh. Whereas, uh, that's just a couple zombies. You just kill enough zombies. Right? Let's go with Flesh Golem. I like it. So that's all you'll need there. So let's get some zombie flesh going on. I'll just show you that. Oh, that's rotten. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So you, all you got to do, it's a regular crafting recipe. Bow, block of flesh. And then all you got to do to actually make the golem itself is come in here, and you can see you need eight humanus, eight modus, and eight spiritus. So the easiest thing that I've ever found for humanus... All right, guys, so if you get yourself a thalmometer, you can scan things. And this is pretty simply made as well. It's just a basic crafting recipe. All you need is two gold and one of each of the types of, of shards. As you're mining, you'll find these as world gen. So an entropy shard, an air shard, an earth shard, water shard, fire shard, order shard, and a piece of glass. That's all you need for the scanning thing. And if you right-click on things, you can scan things. Borderstone has one sax a minute. You can see in the bottom right. It will show up in the bottom right of the screen, but you can't probably see it over my banner. Sorry about that. But you can see if you hover over this flesh that I just scanned, it gives one humanus. So for one golem, you'll need eight of these humanus. So I'm going to grab seven rotten flesh because there's one on the ground I'm going to pick up. I'm 
Yep, eight humanus. Uh, modus, a good source of modus is trap doors. Throw these on the ground to show you. So there's one modus apiece, and that's two arbor. Doors, regular doors are also a good source. They give two apiece, I think, but they don't just give arbor. I think they give something else as well. Yeah, you get some, uh, you get some machina right there too, machina, whatever it's called. So I go with the trap doors. It's going to be the same material cost either way, because a trap door is just you get two of them for for six planks, whereas you get one door for six planks in the door shape. So it's the same either way. Just get a couple of these guys, and then for what was the third thing we needed? Spiritus, soul sand. It would be what I would suggest. Just go to the nether, get yourself some soul sand. It's not that hard to do. So you get one Spiritus, one Terra, and one uh, vin vincul vin Vinculum, I want to say that says. Man, pronunciation fails all day long. So all you got to do to get this crafted is now we've got all the things on there. The little that we've got a bunch of other crap in there too. But that's all right. I mean, it's this is a low tier setup. Later on in your Thawncraft career, you find ways to reduce waste of this kind. Uh, we don't really have that set up here because this is just a basic setup. So don't worry about that. It's not a big deal really. So just toss it in, and it's just kind of timed as well. If you have a set of uh, goggles, let's get some goggles. These are the goggles of revealing from Thawncraft. They don't have a regular recipe, but you can find them in here. Under Thaumaturgy, I think, I'm going to say. No, it's not it. I think it's, yeah, Artifice. So you're going to use two of the Thaumameters, so I just showed you. Two gold and two leather on either side for a total of four leather. And that's going to be on the arcade workbench, which is this guy right here. And you put your wand on there, and you put all that things on there. And you need five of each element. Three Order and three Perdicia, but five of everything else. And if you wear these goggles, you can see what's in the cauldron. So there's nothing in there right now. But if I threw something in there... Let's throw just a cobblestone in there. Or I can throw it on the ground. So now we can see that there's one Saxum and one Perdito in there. And if you watch for a few seconds, those numbers will count down. It's, just, it's kind of, it's not a really huge, it's not a short, super short time, but you can see that, this, that the Perdito just disappeared. And after a few minutes, the Saxum will too. It breaks it down. So the Saxum was broken down into one Terra, because that's one of its core elements. And now we get a little bit of Flux. And you can just place something there to displace it. Or if you pop a hole in your ceiling, it'll float away on its own. If you don't mind the possibility of monsters getting in there. <laughs> so what, all we're going to do is we're going to throw all this stuff in here. So you can see all that crap is in there. And all you got to do from there is throw in your block of flesh for the catalyst. That's the last thing that goes in. And look, we got a flesh golem. So the golems are pretty cool. You're going to want to also get yourself a Gollumancer's Bell for controlling these guys. So the Gollumancer's Bell is pretty easy to make as well. I don't think it has a base recipe. No, it doesn't. So let's get in here. If we go into our Gollumancy tab, we can see the bells right here. And it tells you all how to use it. I'll show you guys as we go along. But this is base, just a short rundown on how to use the bell. The bell is what's going to let you control your golems. Why was there a helmet up that said it was a stick? Is that going to come back? I want to see that again. Did you guys see that? <laughs> well, anyway, you just need five Perdito, and that's it, on your wand. Yep, there's a helmet. What? Oh, it said it was a stick. <laughs> Some kind of glitch, I don't know. But you get five Ordo on your wand, any kind of stick, and just four Nether Quartz, and that's on the Arcane Workbench, which again is this guy. And you get yourself a bell. You know what? I'll actually craft one real quick. So you put your wand. You can see I've got five ordo. At least five ordo. I've got 77 and a half ordo. And you get your quartz. Neither quartz. And let's grab a stick. Again, cheating so you don't have to. And you just make like a square over here like you're going to make a block. But then you add a stick to it. And bam, it's a bell. And you can see that on my wand, I now have 73 instead of 77 Ordo, so you just need a little bit of Ordo. But because the wand is so awesome, it gave me a discount. You can see it says 85% V cost because of the wand being awesome. So that's all you're going to need there. Now we got a bell. We won't need the wand again.
probably. So now we're going to need to make a core. Like I said, we're going to need two cores. You're going to need the gather core for the first one. So that's just going to be, you start out with a blank core, which is just four clay bricks and one night ore. The clay bricks are going to be pretty easy to make. So you go out mining, you find yourself a river, you gather up eight clay, and you just come over here to your furnace, and we're just going to throw them in there. You cook up your bricks. And then it's just a basic crafting recipe after that. Or no, sorry, it's a, uh, it's one of these guys. So here are bricks in here. We're going to make two cores. And then for the Nitor, it's going to be three Ignis, three Lux, and three Potentia. And then you throw in a Glowstone. So there's quite a few neither materials involved in this. But that's alright, because golems are awesome! We're going to need two Nitor, so I'm going to grab two of these guys. That's our catalyst, remember. And then what we're going to do is Ignis, I believe is on Netherrack. Ignis is on a lot of things. The base elements, the uh, primal elements, are on a lot of things. Yep, there's Ignis. So let's just go with Ignis. We need three Ignis per core. So we're going to want six nether rack. There we go. And then Lux. You can get Lux off of torches. I don't know why I put the thumb meter away. One Lux per torch. So we'll need six of those as well. How many did I get? Five? Figures. <laughs> so there you go. we got six torches. And then Potentia. I don't know why I typed out Potentia. Hey. Uh, Redstone has a good amount of Potentia on it. Yep. Two Potentia per Redstone. You can't really read that. I don't, it's kind of bright, but there's two Potentia per Redstone. If we put look at it in our inventory, mouse over it and hold the Shift button... Or the sneak button, whatever you rebound your sneaking to. You can see it a little bit easier. So there's two Potentia, one Machina. So we only need three of these guys. Now we're done with this. So all we're going to do is come up here. Oh, that hasn't all boiled off yet. All the extra stuff from waking the Golem hasn't boiled off yet. So if you want that all to go away, just right-click with your wand. Shift right-click. There we go. It'll make a giant mess. But you can just displace it by, by placing things and breaking it. I think there's a better way to do it, but I haven't gotten to that point yet myself, so I'm not really 100% certain. So we'll just get our bucket of water, we, we'll, we'll refill this and let it boil. All the heat for all the days, guys. And you can do both of these nitro at once. All you gotta do is, as soon as you see the bubbles, you just throw in everything. So there's that, there's that, and there's that. So all the stuff's in there, and then the catalyst. Catalyst last, as always. So you saw the stuff drastically disappeared, and now I have two Nitor in my inventory. Nitor are really awesome, by the way. Oh, no crap out of that one. Weird. Nitor are really awesome. Just, just as items, they're awesome, because you can place them down, and then you get this cool little glowing light. First of all, they're a light source. They, they function just like torches as a, as a light source, so you can place them wherever you want to. They're also heat sources for the cauldron, so if you don't want fire down here anymore, you can just drop a nitor, and it will function the exact same way as the fire did. And the nice thing is there's no heat, though. These gen don't generate any kind of heat, so you don't have to worry about burning down. If, you, if your house is made out of wood, you won't be burning down your walls. No worries there. So now that we've got our two nitor, we're going to come over here, and we're going to drop these in the middle of the crafting recipe. And you can see that we need five ordo and five ignis, so we're going to stick our wand back on there. Pow. So we got two blank animation cores, and then we're going to turn these into one of them for gather. So we need five lucrum and five terra for the gather one. And then for the harvest one, we need five mesis, mesis, mes, mesimesis, <laughs> five mesis, uh, which is the crop element, and five mito, which is the harvest element. So if I'm 
not horribly mistaken, we can get uh, Mises. Or no, sorry, we can get uh, the crop element. Let's try wheat. I'll bet you anything wheat has it. Yep, two wheat and one famous, which is hunger. So this is going to be two. How many did it say we needed for that? Five? Do seeds have one? That'd be pretty awesome. Let's see if seeds have a Mises. Nope. So we'll need... These have two on them. We're going to need six to cover the five, so we need three of these. So there's our wheat. And then we're going to need the uh, harvest. We need, we need, we need meat, though. We need, we need the meat. So, let's try a hoe. There's a stone hoe. Yep, there's two on that. How about a wooden hoe? That might be even better. There's one on that one. So I would suggest... You can, you can equal five really well if you just come up here and you grab two stone and one one wooden one. You can see you can equal five really easily. But if you do that, you're already going to be wasting all this terra and all this perdito from the stone element on here. But if you do that, you're also going to be wasting uh, two arbor. So really, it's, it doesn't really matter. You're going to have waste either way. Bunch of ordo and perdito, or less perdito and ordo, but also ar arbor. And you'll get an extra... Extra, an extra point of wasted harvest aspect or a couple of arbor aspects for the wood. Either way, you're wasting a little bit, and I wouldn't suggest using anything higher than that because if you, for like with uh, with the iron hoe, you're going to have the metallum aspect. With the golden hoe, probably the same. So the different hoes, things tend to be made up of what they're made out of. So if you uh, if you if you dump uh, if you dump spices in your soup, don't expect the soup to be unspicy. If you know what I'm saying. Who spiked the punch bowl? That's the question. So all we're going to do for this one is we're just going to throw in the three hoes. We're also going to throw in the uh, harvest aspect. <laughs> throw down them hoes. And your wheat. And I just completely derped and forgot what the catalyst was. Oh, the core. Duh! There we go. There's our harvest aspect. There's our bunch of extra wasted crap. Let me grab my wand out of the table here. So we got one, we're going to want to get rid of all this extra stuff in here. There we go. Let's get another bucket of water. And by the way, you can also pump water in here. In fact, let's demonstrate that really quick, because why not? You can get yourself, if you've got the uh, mod called Extra Utilities in there, you can get yourself a transfer node. Let's go with this. This is probably the easiest way. Uh, you can get a liquid transfer node and an item transfer node. So I'm going to go with the uh, liquid one. And you can get yourself some transfer vibes. And these are pretty easy to make as well. The transfer node for liquid is made out of a regular item transfer node, two iron, a bucket, and two lapis. The bucket, of course, just being made out of three iron. And the regular item transfer node is an ender pearl, a sorting pipe, two redstone, a chest, and two regular stone. The chest, of course, being just uh, eight wood planks in a circle. And the pipe that you need as part of the recipe that you also need for moving the liquid is just going to be six stone slabs, two glass, and a redstone. Your stone slab is just going to be made out of three stone that you cook. You get six, 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 gets you six of them. So no big deal there. And all you're going to need to do for this is place down an item. You get your infinite water source. So you got your bucket of water on the right side, your bucket of water on the left side. In the center, just place any item. Place your liquid node on top of it, your transfer node down on top of it. And then just on the edge, you can just target it because you can see the hitbox. There's a little black outline around it. You can see that you can just move off it just slightly and you can reach the dirt underneath of it. Pop it out of there. And as soon as you pop it out of there, the infinite water source will flow through again. And if you right-click on your transfer node, you can see that it's filling up with water. It's got 8,000 millibuckets. You saw it counting up there for a second. And then all you got to do is just connect this over, and it will start filling this up.
Ahem, it will start filling this up. Thank you. This thing isn't really that quick by default, but if you want it to move water quicker, you can make yourself a mining upgrade for this node. There's two upgrades, actually. You're going to have your speed upgrade and your mining upgrade. The speed upgrade is how fast it transfers things down the pipe. The speed upgrade is you can get four of them for just two gold, three gold nuggets, and four blocks of redstone. The nuggets are just you break one bar into nine of them. The redstone blocks is just nine redstone. And then the mining upgrade is a little bit more expensive. It takes four lapis. Four iron ore, or f I'm sorry, four iron ingots and one iron pickaxe. The iron pickaxe is going to be just three iron and two sticks, like any other pickaxe. So that's a little more expensive, and you only get two of them. So let's go ahead and just pretend that we made those really quick. And I'll get three more of those guys and one more of that guy. And you just come up here, and you can just drop them in the slot here. So if you watch it, you can see it's trying to find somewhere to put the water. So the X plus one, plus two, plus three you're seeing is it's checking each pipe. This is the plus one pipe. This is the plus two pipe, and this is the plus three pipe. If you look in the top left of my screen where it says Biome Mountain, and then it says X colon 1426, 1425, 1424. So you can see I'm moving along the X axis in the coordinate system. So what it's doing is it's checking each pipe along its X from it. So plus one is from where it's at. So it's its location plus one X. Its location plus two X. Its location plus three X to see where I can put that water. And once it finds somewhere it will put it in there, and it just keeps checking over and over and over again for where it can put the water. So if you put the speed upgrade in there, you can see that it will start checking faster. Look at that. Now it's moving water a lot faster. The mining upgrade will be how fast it pulls water out of the mining source, so how fast it picks it up. So then you can get water in there a lot quicker. So if we dump this water out, you can see that it almost instantly comes back now. If we just sneak right-click on there with the wand. There we go. So it's a lot quicker now. So now we don't have to keep using buckets, even though we're almost done with this, this, this showing. But hey, one extra part of the build spotlight. No big deal. So now we're going to get the gather the gather core, which is going to be three, five lucrum and five terra. I believe dirt has terra on it. Yep, two terra per dirt. So we're just going to get ourselves three dirt. And the first thing I can think of that has lucrum on it is lapis, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Nope, not lapis. What has lucrum on it? Gold? It's the greed aspect, I think. Yep, gold's got two of them. Uh, diamonds have it. Emeralds have it. Whatever you've got sort of to hand that has it is going to work out for you. Uh, so it might be a little expensive if you don't have the gold laying around, but you should by this point because a lot of the recipes that we've been using have had gold in them. So what's going to be five of each? Yeah. So we had two here, two, four, six. And just as before, we're going to do the exact same thing. Dirt, gold, and our catalyst, which is our blank core in this case. And ta-da! We got our gather core. And we got some extra elements in there. We'll just pop that out. No big deal. So we should be all set with that. Why did you stop working? Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we got our golem and our cores. Next, we're going to set up a house to bring everything in here. So let's actually, let's do this. I'm going to put down a chest right here. Chest, of course, being stupid easy to make, as I showed earlier, just eight planks in a circle. Let's say we want everything that we come in from our golem farm to come in right here. And let's use a transfer duct, or an item duct. Or the transfer node, sorry. Let's use the exact same thing that we just used a second ago. Instead of the liquid one we did, let's use an item, item duct, and let's get some more of those upgrades. Really, you can use any sort of transfer system you want to, because all we're doing is we're bringing things from the farm here we're going to be building in just a second. So you can use build craft piping, you can use uh, thumb craft, item ducts, you can use whatever sort of, you can have the golem put it however you want to, but this is what we're going to do for the time being. 
and we're going to build our house right here. So, through the magic of film editing, let's make a house. Ha So we got our house going on here. All we need to do now is get it loaded up with what we want it to be built out of. Or not built out of, but what we want to put inside of it. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I was going to put a chest. But I don't think I want to do a chest because we need to keep it dark. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So instead, I'm going to put an ender chest in here. Ender chests, since you're going to the nether anyway, you might as well grab yourself a few blaze rods. This is going to be the easiest way to do it. Just two obsidian, four blaze rods, an ender pearl, a piece of wool, and a regular chest. We'll get you an ender chest. You'll need two of these as well as two of the golems. I didn't make two of the golems before, but you will need two of them. And they can just dump right into this ender chest so you can pull out from over there. And you have to keep this completely enclosed. No doors, no trap doors, no ways of getting in. This has to be completely enclosed because it has to stay completely dark inside. These orberry bushes, as I mentioned before, you'll find them in your as your cruising through the underground you'll find them in dark places and you can only plant them in dark places and most likely your building is going to be way bigger and I'll explain that in a second as well this is an elevator block and this is made pretty simply as well just surround a, a uh, ender pearl with any color wool just eight wool just grab yourself two of these and if you stand on it and you pressed your sneak button you'll go down so now we're inside the building because there's a second block in here and if you press space, you'll go up again. Shift, space, shift, space, shift, space, woo! So basically, we're going to want to get in here. If you don't want to use the elevator blocks, this is also from Extra Utilities Mods. So if you're able to make those pipes I made that connect the crucible to the water, you'll be able to make these as well. Or no, wow, that was a complete derp, sorry. Those pipes are Extra Utilities. This elevator is open blocks. Sorry about that. I just lied to you right there. Don't listen to me, except do, because I'm doing build spotlights. This is from a mod called Open Blocks. If you don't have open blocks, you'll just have to find some other way of getting inside where it's dark. You have to complete, keep this completely dark. Uh, the light level has to be below 8 to, to plant them. And I think they grow at even darker levels. I think 5. I'll have to check the wiki on that one. I'll put a little annotation up on the video to show you exactly what the light levels need to be. Should have had that information ready, sorry. No big deal. It's alright, we're okay. So just place your ender chest in here. And if you're worried about monsters spawning in here, all you got to do is make your floor out of glass. Or half blocks. Or anything that monsters can't spawn on. So I use glass because it's a clear substance. This is just vanilla glass and vanilla bricks. So you're okay there, either way. And then you can get your, uh, your various bushes here. And these don't plant in dirt, they plant in regular rock, or cobblestone, or stone, or brick, or whatever. So you can just plant these like this. Bam. So there's a couple of gold ones. We can get a couple of iron ones. A couple of uh, copper ones. Here's a couple of tin. If I'd made this ten wide, we could have done a couple of lead, but we can't because I only made one wide. So there's the... Uh, the oh, sorry, aluminum, not lead. So there's, there's your oriberry bushes. And then all you're going to have to do for this is you're going to take your golem guy and you're going to place one just standing. So just place him wherever you want to, really. Um, directly in front of him is fine. That's fine. And then the second golem, again, I only made one, but you'll need to make two. You place him against the side of the chest. So just aim against the side of the chest and right-click like so. And you'll have your two golems. And then you take your cores. You want to put your gather core on the guy that's on the chest. And you want to put your harvest core on the guy that's freestanding, like so. Just right-click them with it, and they'll look up. They're like, oh, hey, we're ready to go. All right, so what you do with these guys is after you get them all set up, let's say you're going to place them down and you misclick, you put them in the wrong spot. You just take your Golem Answer Bell that we made a few minutes ago. If you right-click, you'll see where they're placed. You can see the little circle on the, on the chest there, little arcane circle showing where he's, he's placed against the chest. You right-click this guy. You can see he's on the floor there. And if you misclicked him, let's say you put this guy on the wrong side of the chest, because he will insert, when he gathers the berries, he will insert into whatever side he's placed against. So that's kind of important to note. So if you place him against the wrong side for whatever reason, I mean, this is an ender chest feeding to our base, so we don't really care. But if you put something in the wrong place, you can just uh, left-click. We'll pick him up. 
You can see we've got him with his golem. You can see it says Flesh Golem, Golem Animation Card Gather, zero marked locations. It saves everything about him. You can just re-right click him against the side there. Why'd you go over there? I think I was just too close. Oh, no. Weird. There we go. So I was just facing the wrong angle. And then if you shift left click instead or sneak left click instead of just left clicking, you'll separate him from his core. So you'll pick up the, just the just the basic flesh golem and the gather core. And then you can replace however you want to. So you can click him there, and then you can put his core back on him, and he's all good to go. So that's how you operate the bell. If you want to tell them to do something specific, if you right-click him and then click somewhere else, it'll mark a different location. It's just right-clicks. This will tell him to gather stuff from that block. I don't know why you'd gather stuff from there. Right-click will remove that. And that's, you know, you can mark multiple things if they're of important. Uh, this bell is more proficient for using golems that have sortings things going on if you have a golem that's filling or emptying inventories and things of that nature but for our basic purposes this is going to be plenty good enough so you should be all set with that make sure to mark your golems if you need to but if you don't need to don't bother don't worry about it this bell was really just so you can the only reason i suggested getting this in the first place is if you want to move them around because you can't just pick them up without this bell so he is going to gather anything that gets dropped and he's going to throw it in the chest so if i drop that on the ground he'll see it and he'll go grab it, and it'll stick it in the chest. See that? So his chore is to pick up the ore as they drop. The harvest golem, when he harvests things, he just they drop on the ground, and he won't do anything beyond that. He just goes up and he goes whap, and he just smacks the, the uh, he just smacks the bush, and the ore will just drop on the ground. So he will pop them free, and then he will go get them, and put them in the chest. That way, back in your basin here. You'll have your ender chest inside. You can just pull them out of there when they come out. And you can use those for free ore. Uh, you can even set them up into an auto crafting system. And I'll show you that in a, in a second if you'd like to see that. So that you can automatically get ingots out of it. So let's give these guys a few minutes to grow. I'm just going to stand right here in the corner and let them do their thing. And we'll watch these. And as soon as these oreberry bushes grow and they start harvesting, I'll catch that on camera. I'll show you. Give us one second, guys. We'll do a quick cut. Oh, I think we just got some copper, or tin, or whatever that is. There's definitely some ore on that ore berry bush. Go get it, Golem. Yes! 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 And he picked it up instantly and put it in the chest. That is what I like to see. It was tin. Sweet. So, what we got here is we got a tin ore. And while we were waiting on the golems, I actually went back into the base and I moved the ender chest up and made a little simple setup here. Ender chest is now up here. You can see the tin ore berry bush in there. And what I've got going on here is there is some um, pipes going on. This is a couple different mods. I was just going to do some more of the extra utilities piping that you see over there that I showed you a little while ago. But instead, since this is a build spotlight, I like to show everything from every mod possible that I like. Uh, this is a better furnace. Better furnaces are super OP. That's why they're here. <laughs> better furnaces is a mod that gives you, well, better furnaces. And what happens is a lot of mods add iron furnaces, but it adds its own special type of iron furnace. Actually, you know what? I'm going to look at this in any eye because it's easier to see. So it gives you... Let's do at better. I should do... Yes, okay. So it gives you the iron furnace, which is just a regular furnace surrounded by iron, which then gives you a gold furnace, which is the iron furnace surrounded by gold, and then the diamond one, which is four diamonds and four glass surrounding the gold furnace, and then the hell furnace, which you're seeing featured here, is two blocks of diamonds, three magma cream, two nether brick, and a TNT, which is four sand and five gunpowder. Around the diamond furnace gets you the hell furnace, which is what you've been seeing featured in the base. And then there's the Extreme Furnace, Extreme Furnace, which is a Nether Star with the Hell Furnace, two Ender, Eyes of Ender, two End Stone, and Nether Brick. The Eyes of Ender, of course, is one Blaze Powder and one Ender Pearl, gets you one of those. 
The Neither Star is a boss drop from the, uh, from the Wither, and the End Stone comes from the End. And so what this does is these better furnaces, the Iron Furnace cooks at one time, 1.5 times faster than a vanilla, uh, vanilla Stone Furnace. The Gold Furnace cooks two times. The Diamond Furnace cooks three times. The Extreme co Furnace cooks, I think, ten times. And the Extreme, fur or, I'm sorry, the Hell Furnace cooks, like I think, ten times. And the Extreme Furnace cooks 50 times faster. So if anybody's familiar with the olden days of Minecraft, from Equivalent Exchange 2, when we had the Red Matter Furnace and the Dark Matter Furnace, this thing cooks about as fast as one of those would. Maybe a little faster than the Dark, maybe a little, little slower than the Extreme, or than the Red Matter, one of the two. But then you can make upgrades as well. It's got the basic fuel efficiency upgrade, four Ender Pearls, four Lapis Lazuli blocks, which is nine Lapis, and one Coal gets you one of these. And the ore processing unit is just one Piston, which is a Iron Ingot, a Redstone, two Cobblestone, and three Planks. Or if you have Dark Craft installed, you can use a Force Ingot. And then seven Stone and a Flint, it gets you an ore upgrade. What these do is the, uh, the the fuel efficiency upgrade makes so you can cook twice as much with the same fuel, or or you can think of it as it halves your fuel fuel costs. So instead of cooking eight things with one coal, you can cook sixteen, for example. And then the the ore processing gives you doubles your ore output. So if you bring in like if you just put like a vanilla iron ore in there, you'll get two iron ingots out of it. And then these have durability damage though, so eventually these will break. Uh, but they have an upgraded version, the Advanced Fuel Efficiency and the Advanced Ore Processing, which you take one of the base ones and surround it with four diamonds, four eyes of vendor, and a gas tier for the, or, for the uh, fuel one. Or for the Ore Processing Advanced one, it's four diamonds, two obsidian, two more pistons around the, the basic one. And these have other upgrades as well. This is a liquid upgrade. So you take four iron, three glass, and a bucket, get you the uh, liquid upgrade, which makes so it can run off of fuels. You can see I've got this loaded with biofuel. Because I've got one of each of those in there. The other upgrades, this is a storage upgrade. Sneak click on a better furnace to upgrade its storage. It means it can hold more. And then you've got the color upgrade, which if you surround a gold ingot with any any types of dyes, you can get the color upgrades. So you can make it look like whatever color you want to. And then there's auto output, auto input, and, and factory upgrades, which I haven't played with at all before. But it's not a big deal. I think they just do what they say they do. And then these are barrels. These come from factorization. These are factorization barrels. A lot of people are familiar with these. These are just uh, oak wood slabs, or actually it's any kind of slabs. The, the barrel will come out of what you what you make out of. So if we look at barrel here, you can see there's a bunch of them. There's the oaken barrel, oak wood barrel, silky oak barrel. Um, that's not what I was looking for. Let's try this. No, that didn't help either. Well, if you make it out of planks, if you make it out of um, logs, whatever the log is will give you the color of barrels. So you can get like a jungle wood one that's different from a uh, oak and wood one. The only difference is texture and color. There's really no functional functional difference. But you take a slab, which is going to be three planks of whatever you make, and then seven logs get you a barrel. And these hold tons of things. And the reason why I'm smelting these is, like I said earlier, when I looked up the ore berry, we were able to see that we can craft a iron ingot out of an ore berry. So if we look at the uh, recipe here for these guys, you can see we can craft these. But that's not the same for all of them. The gold one, it doesn't use, it doesn't work the same way. So there's no recipe to just automatically craft it into an ingot. So I'm not going to do an automatic crafting setup. What I'm instead going to do is an automatic smelting setup. So here's the inner chest. We've now got, looks like, three tin. Wow, those are cooking pretty quick. And we're going to bring these down into the furnace, which is then going to put them in their, their barrels, which you can see I've preloaded with each nugget. So here's a gold nugget, here's an iron one, here's a copper one, here's a tin, and here's an aluminum ingot. And then what we're going to do, there's two ways to do this. These are item ducts from Thermal Expansion. Install the pneumatic servo to upgrade. Uh, these are pretty easy to make. It's just two tin around a hardened glass. And all you got to do for hardened glass is you make an induction smelting machine from thermal expansion. You have to power it in some fashion. Not going to get into that really quick too much. But you can see just to take your induction smelter, put a piece of lead and eight pulverized obsidian, which is just built out of, an, which is just you pulverize obsidian. 
that's these machines. So if I go at thermal here, here is your pulverizer, which is a machine block. Any kind of glass and any kind of iron works. Don't ignore the steel. This is an alternate recipe if you happen to have steel laying around. Don't want to use your iron. Any kind of glass, gold in the middle, and iron on the edges. And then a piston, which I showed you earlier. And then two flint, two copper, and a redstone reception coil, which is a gold and two redstone, like so. That's going to get you your pulverizer. And then your induction smelter is going to be that same machine frame, the same reception coil, and a bucket, and two iron var. The iron var you're going to make by... If you pulverize iron, you have a chance of getting it, which is this uh, ferrous metal. So you'll find ferrous ore in the world gen. And if you pulverize the ferrous, if you, you can smelt it straight into ferrous ingots, but you're probably not going to do that. If you pulverize it, you'll get ferrous, ferrous metal. And then for the iron var itself, you get this blend which you cook up, which is two iron dust, which you pulverize those into dust as well and combine it with one of those ferrous metal dusts. You get three of those. So you can find the ore, or sometimes if you pulverize iron, you have a chance of getting it as well. Here's the ferrous metal. There we go. So if you pulverize iron ore, you have a chance, 10% chance of getting some of it as well. So you can find it as world gen, or you can pulverize it, and then the... Uh, that's how you get those. You're going to have to power it with one of these machines. Probably the easiest one is going to be your steam dynamo, because you can just throw coal and water in there, just like any steam engine. It's just copper gears. Copper around stone gear. Stone around a wood gear. Wood out of four sticks. Uh, those are pretty easy to make. And this is just a silver transmission coil. It's the same as the golden one, but it's silver in the middle. So you can just make one of these to power those machines. Not going to make the actual setup, but that's how to do it. Not that hard. These item ducts are pretty nice to use, because otherwise you have to get build craft pipes and, and diamond um, diamond filter pipes and all that kind of craziness. These are really easy to use, because really all you got to do is to get these out of here. You can just take your wrench, you right-click. this. See the little blue arrow that kind of points upwards? If you right-click it once, it turns red. So we're going to do that on both these sides. And then you can either just stick a lever on the wall... Bam. And you can see that it pulled them out. And it stuck them in there. So they instantly got they instantly got smelted as soon as they came down. Or you can install the pneumatic servo, which it was talking about before. Two iron, two glass of any kind, and a redstone. We'll get you one servo, and you just right-click this. Servo has been installed. If I wasn't in creative mode, it would have destroyed it. Or not destroyed it. If you install it on the pipe, and then you remove the pipe later, you get it back. So let me demonstrate that really quick. It doesn't destroy it, it just, go, it just puts it in there. So, bam. You can see the message in the bottom left says it was installed. If I, if I shift right-click with the, with the crescent hammer, you can see it popped out. So you get it back. So your crescent hammer is pretty easy to make as well. Just three iron and a tin. But if you install the servo, you don't have to actually use the lever. You can just right-click it directly and you can tell it, hey, pull everything out but ignore redstone signal. And as soon as you click that, it will pull everything out of the bottom of the furnace. See, there's the nuggets. They're going to travel down their pipe, and they're going to go into the appropriate barrel all automatically because the pipe is smart enough. It doesn't have to be filtered. You can see we now have four tin nuggets. So that's how that's going to work out. That's our automated setup. You can use the lever if you don't, want, if you don't have the servo. If you want to use a servo, maybe you don't have room for a lever, like right here. This is right next to the glass, for example. You could do that. But either way, now this is automatic or income because you can see that the, the uh, while we were talking... We got a couple more tin, and this came through here and got smelted and then went into our barrel. Later on, we can come in here and we can say, oh, we've got nine of these. We can just pick up some out of the, out of the barrel and we can craft out a, a tin ingot. Oh, it's smelting something. What did it smelt? Oh, we got a copper. Bam. Oh, we got two of them. Sweet. So our columns are doing their work. I like it. This is a successful build, guys. This is free ore generation. You can chunk load this. And just leave it running forever, and you will just get infinite amounts of free ore because these bushes are growing it. And the reason why I said that you might extend this earlier when I was talking about building this bigger, building a longer building, if you build more golems, if you get a couple more of these guys, and you make yourself a longer building, you could double this, triple this, uh, make three rows of buildings, five rows of buildings, make just one big building, and just make several rows of bushes, and just have a bunch of golems. The more of these you find, the faster you'll get them because there, there'll be more of them growing. 
So you could just have like a giant warehouse building full of these. You can have multiple levels if you wanted to. Stack up the levels. You could put like a... Uh, let me get another brick here. You could just have like another one like right above this. Like so. And you could just plant some more up here. And then you could get like another another level with more golems up here. And you just all have them dumping into that one chest if you wanted to. And then you would just have just tons. There's just so many different ways you can build up this building. Just as you're exploring the world, keep an eye out for those bushes, guys. The ore berry, the only bush that I haven't showcased so far is going to be the essence berry bush. And the essence berry bush is going to be this guy right here. You'll find that in the world. Tastes like creeper. And it gives you these essence, concentrated essence berries. And all that these do is you don't smelt these into anything. You eat them for experience. So if you keep an eye on my experience bar in the bottom of the screen there, you can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five... Five and a quarter bars of experience, you eat this. Bam. And now I've got over half a level. So that's just free experience. You don't smelt that into anything. You don't do anything with that special. You just consume it for... Whoa. Whoa, calm down, cursor. Jeez. You just consume it straight up for experience. So that is your Orberry setup, guys. I'm really happy that we got to do the spotlight. I'm really happy that we got to do a new channel. Make sure to keep an eye out for me because I'm going to be doing all my new channel things on Rob the OP Gamer now. So uh, just don't forget about that because you can check out all my old, vi old, all my game videos coming up. Everything I do is going to be on my channels, uh, Twitch and YouTube, slash Rob the OP Gamer, as well as uh, you can check out on Facebook and Twitter. If you follow me there, you can see when I post videos up. And it's the same with there. It's just Rob the OP, OP Gamer for both of those as well. So I'm glad that we got this new, ser this new channel kicked off with a brand new episode of my old series. Hope everybody enjoyed this. And I hope you all had an OP time. Catch you later.